AM 650 KGAB, Cheyenne's number one news talk radio station. On the phone, I believe I have Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee. Good afternoon, Deborah. Good afternoon, Doug. Well, first of all, of course, you guys kind of got, uh, kind of got, uh, I guess, watered out yesterday. How's that coming? Oh, um, yeah, a lot of absentee ballots are coming in. In fact, we've sent out more than 10,000, and we've gotten more than half of those back, which is very good. Voters are returning their ballots on time. Uh, because, as you know, if a voter does not turn in their ballot by 7 p.m. on the day of the election, we can't count that ballot. Are you guys going to be open Monday, or do we know yet? We will be. Now, in, in terms of the election itself, and you mentioned the huge number of absentee ballots, but ev- everything's different this year with COVID-19. What's different about the upcoming primary election as opposed to what we've had before? Well, number one, we do have, as you said, a lot more absentee ballots because people are exercising their right to vote at home. Um, Secondly, uh, we have implemented a number of social distancing protocols, both with our early voting site in the atrium and at the vote centers on election day. So the machines are spaced apart and the voter check-in stations are spaced apart. We have touch-free voting, meaning voters are given a disposable paper straw that they can use to mark their ballot so they aren't actually touching the screen of the voting machine. We have sanitizer available when people enter and exit, and we are regularly sanitizing the voting machines and the poll books. So a number of measures are in place, and we do... um, we don't let crowds gather within the vote center itself. So when people go to vote on election day, if they don't, uh, if they don't vote absentee early, should they expect a little longer wait at the polls, or do we you know? know I do anticipate a longer wait um, because, simply because of the need to limit the number of people within a center. Um, and also, um, they just need to be patient. But it will go quickly. The process will go quickly. But I do anticipate uh, crowds, particularly during the general election. And I would like to suggest a few things for those who do go to the polls on Election Day. Usually early morning and at the close of near the close of polls are when they're most crowded. So those are generally the busiest times. So voters might look at going sometime during mid-afternoon. And also on our website, which will be active on Election Day, voters can go on and they can see the estimated wait time at each vote center. So they can kind of gauge which place might have uh, a, a less of a wait time. Now, Deborah, is something that was implemented a couple of years ago here in Laramie County, but it's, it's not in effect everywhere in Wyoming, so some people may not be familiar with it. We no longer have designated polling stations. We have vote centers. Explain how that, explain how that works, if you will. Yeah, that's correct, and thank you for bringing that up. Yes, in 2016, Laramie County went to vote centers, and what that means is a voter can go to any one of our locations where we have a vote center and vote. So, for example, if they live in Cheyenne, they could go to Pine Bluffs and vote. If they live in Pine Bluffs and work in Cheyenne, they can vote in Cheyenne. They, they don't have to go to an assigned polling place. And they can go on our website and enter their address and see all the locations of the various vote centers. Now, Deborah, for, for people, for example, who don't know what city council ward they're in or what legislative district they're in and, and who their choices are, how can people investigate that ahead of time? Well, they can, uh, they can call our office and inquire. They can also go on our website again, and they can enter their address, and it's going to pull up their sample ballot so they can see what it looks like. They can see who the incumbents are. And they just can give a lot of information that way. Do you find people are are sometimes confused about that? Yes, they are. They they do get confused. And if I could give out the uh, our website, sure, go ahead. It's elections. dot com. 
Okay, I'm speaking with Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee. We're talking about all things election related. By the way, we do have an open phone line if you have any questions or comments. That number is 632 3323. Again, that's 632 3323. Deborah, something we chatted about a couple weeks ago, and we still don't know how this is going to play out, but we may not have the results on election night as quickly as we're used to. Is that right? I do anticipate we won't have them as quickly, Doug. Um, Number one, we have a large volume of absentee ballots to count, and that will take time. As well, um, we have new voting equipment, and our new equipment doesn't tabulate all the results from one center. Uh, Before, we were able to tabulate everything from one center and transmit it back to our office. This time they'll be bringing the, the, the USB drives from each voting machine back to our office and we'll have to and, you know, put them in our tabulator and add them up. So that, that will cause a bit of a delay. What, why, why was that change made? Well, we, as you may know, the Secretary of State, uh, through their office, we received new voting equipment statewide. The legislature appropriated some seven and a half million dollars uh, for all the counties to get new voting equipment and so there was a procurement process a competitive procurement process and one election vendor was selected to provide all the voting equipment for wyoming so this is something that's statewide it's not just local yes yes are you having a hard time finding election judges with the covid situation you know that is a very fluid situation um Sometimes they will call and and say that they don't wish to do it. And so we're monitoring that very closely. Uh, We do have our election judge training this coming week. And I do anticipate we might have some drop off in our judges between the primary and the general. Um, So we're discussing ways to deal with that. Does it look like we have enough judges for the primary? We do. Okay. We do, and also we are uh, sending out more of our staff to each location, and they would be able to fill in, let's say, if there was a shortage, someone didn't show up. Okay, I'm speaking with Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee. We're talking about all things election-related. Deborah, you mentioned the the local results might be a little slow. I realize the state is under the jurisdiction of the Secretary of State's office, but do you anticipate we might see slower state results, or do we know? You know, we may because of the, I think statewide there's an increase in absentee ballots. So the same, the same effect locally we'll see statewide. Uh, do you think we'll have a results election night, or do we know? I, am, I would guess we would. Yeah, but it will be late. You know, we were very proud of the fact that in 2016 and 2018, we had our results in before the 10 o'clock news. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I don't anticipate that occurring. I think it will be later. Well, for us old radio folks, I can remember when it was 2 or 3 in the morning for some elections. Yes, yes so, I can remember those days as well. Hopefully not that late. Right. Okay, I'm speaking with Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee. We'll be back with more right after these words. Sean Hannity, talk radio for your conservative side. Weekdays at 1 and Sunday mornings at 8 on Cheyenne's number one news talk radio. AM 650 KGAB. Who do I perform for? I perform for all the awesome composers whose music deserves to be heard. I perform for all the stagehands who make sure I never miss a cue. I perform for our high school choir director who taught me to breathe from the diaphragm and sing from the heart. Speech, debate, theater, music. The performing arts teach valuable life lessons that typically aren't taught in the classroom. They help high school students learn leadership skills that prepare them to enjoy more satisfying, productive lives. I perform for Mrs. Evans, my high school debate coach, who has helped me become more confident than I ever dreamed possible. This message presented by the Wyoming High School Activities Association and the high school in your community. Hey! question for you. Who will you perform for? Ladies and gentlemen, today's opponents on Man vs. Train. At the crossing, we have Rick, a 175-pound frustrated man who's running late for work. And on the tracks, we have Bull, a million-pound freight train that takes a mile to stop. 
Let's see who comes out on top. You can't beat a train, so don't try. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. AM 650 KGAB, Cheyenne's number one news talk radio station. On the phone, I have Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee, who is good enough to join us here on short notice today uh, to do a slot uh, after I was a little confused on who I had on Friday. Uh, but in any case, Deborah, if people are voting absentee, how do they go about doing that? I am very glad you asked that because I'd like to dispel a few myths about that. Okay. One, I've heard people say, well, absentee votes are not counted unless there's a tie. That is absolutely untrue. We do count every absentee ballot. Um, I've also heard that that's the only way that people can vote in this election, and that's also untrue. Um, as we mentioned, people can vote by absentee ballot. We mail the ballot, to, and they can vote at home, and then they return it to us. The third way is uh, they can vote... Um, a second way, rather, is they can vote early in the atrium of the, of the county building. And then the last way, of course, is on Election Day at a vote center. Now, I want to offer some tips on how people can make sure their vote counts. Go when ahead. They get an absentee Absolutely. Vote. Follow the instructions on the ballot. Uh, use black ink. Um, only vote for the number of candidates that is indicated on that for that race. So in other words, if it says vote for one and you vote for two, your vote won't count in that race. Do sign the affidavit, which is on the ballot envelope that you return to our office, because if that affidavit is not signed, we cannot count your ballot. And of course, lastly, is make sure it gets to our office no later than 7 p.m. on the day of the election, which is August 18th. And to help voters with that, we do have a 24-7 secure absentee ballot drop box. It's located outside the county building on Cary Avenue, so between 19th and 20th Street. And we do retrieve those ballots on a daily basis and secure them where they will only be opened on Election Day. Um, if voters do mail back their absentee ballot, they probably should do so this week, I would recommend, because it does take seven to ten days through the mail for that ballot to reach us. Um, I also want to add that town clerk offices in Albin, Burns, and Pine do have an absentee ballot drop box in the town clerk's offices. And for those specific times when voters can do that, that information is on our website and is also available at the town clerk offices. Deborah, I'm, I'm going to ask you a kind of a tough question here. There's been a lot of, of concern about fraud with mail-in election ballots. How, how concerned are you about that? In Wyoming, I am not, because we don't mail out a ballot to every single voter. We only mail out an absentee ballot to those registered voters who request them. So if someone calls us and say, I want a ballot, and they aren't registered, number one, we don't mail it. Um, number two, they have to request it. We aren't automatically sending them to every voter. Um, and again, we have those security measures in place where we secure those ballots. Uh, we follow all the state laws in terms of processing those ballots. So in Wyoming, I am not concerned about that. Okay, speaking with Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee, and Deborah, as we've been chatting about uh, throughout this program, big increase in absentee ballots this year. If people are not registered to vote, can they, can they register to vote absentee, or how does that work? Well, what happens is actually um, Monday is the last day to register if a voter plans to vote in the primary election at a polling place so they can they can come and register beforehand but Wyoming law does allow voters to vote on the day of the election so again Monday is the deadline to register before the election and we do recommend they do that because it does save save them time on election day uh, they don't have to register and vote at the same time I know Wyoming law is a little confusing in that sense um, I will say that uh, 
in the last week, we've had an increase of 200 registered voters. So 200 people have registered uh, in just in one week in Laramie County, and that's really wonderful. How, how do our registered voter figures compare to, say, two years ago, if you know? I think they're about the same. We currently have um, around 36,000 registered voters in Laramie County. And, of course, I do expect those numbers to increase, but they are on par with previous elections. Now, we always have a, a generally a large increase for the general election, particularly in presidential years. How, mu- how much bigger of an increase would we expect over 2018 based on past? We could see um, another... I would say uh, possibly 10,000 more voters. So quite a few then. We've seen numbers of 42, 45,000 before. Okay, I'm speaking with Laramie County Clerk Deborah Lee. And again, if you have any questions about anything um, election related, how you cast a ballot, uh, how much time to expect to take, um, all of that sort of thing, learning about what district you live in, uh, a lot of that's at their website. But we are taking uh, calls and comments if anybody has anything they'd like to ask at 632-3323. Now, Deborah, if people register uh, at the day of the election at the polls, do they need to identify themselves somehow, or how does that work? Yes, and I'm glad you asked that if you have if you have a Wyoming driving license you need to bring that that is the number one document to register to vote in Wyoming so you need to bring that um, you have to be 18 years or older on the day of the election you have to be a US citizen you have to be a resident of Laramie County you if you've had a felony conviction your rights have to have been restored and you can't have been adjudicated mentally incompetent. It sounds like you're pretty confident about the integrity of our local elections, so is that right? I am. You know, I, Wyoming voters take voting very seriously, and as individuals, they help ensure that the system is safeguarded. And we do have our election judges are bipartisan, so we do mix the at, the, at a vote center. And even uh, within our office, when we're processing absentee ballots and counting them, those are bipartisan teams. Deborah, looks like we have a caller. Good afternoon. Caller, you're on the air. Good afternoon. Um, Yes, I have kind of a quirky question, I guess. Um, uh, Ms. Lee, you had said that 200 people, additional people, have signed up or registered. And I was wondering if you ever track the demographics or age groups that are newly registered this year? Absolutely. We have demographic information because uh, we our voter registration system is actually a statewide system, and it does track the age groups of those who are registered to vote. And currently, I will say that um, as has been the case in over a quite a period of time. Most voters in Laramie County are the age of 65 or over. Um, The next highest group is 50 to 64. And the least number of registered voters we have is in that 18 to 24 group. And this is a nationwide issue uh, where young people just, uh, there are issues with them getting to, ter- to register and vote, and it, it is a challenge. Why is that? What are some of the well, you know, obstacles? There have been a lot. There's been a lot of research on this, and one of the findings of one study was that the young people say, "No one asked me." What? The, yeah, <laughs> they said nobody asked me to register. Oh, brother! And vote. Bold. Oh, so bold engraved invitations are probably needed. (laughs) And they felt uncomfortable. They felt like they didn't know what to do. Uh, They didn't know how to find out about candidates. Um, Yeah. So that was was the number one finding. So if you know a person in that age group, I would give them a call and I would take them down to the county building and get them registered or, you know, take them with you to to the polls on election day and get them registered and vote. And also, they say it takes a voter three times voting before it becomes a habit. Oh, okay. That's really? Yeah. yeah. I would think, you know, with all the uh, uh, 
protests going on and everyone being so um, talkative, we'll say, about, you know, the current election year and what's whatever they think is at stake, um, either side. <clears throat> I'm myself, I'm independent, so, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm a little disappointed in the 18 year old and above demographic that you just stated. Right, and um, you know, but I don't want people to vote who don't care, aren't informed. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks and for the call. I'd like to mention one other myth I've heard about voter registration. Just I heard it three times last week. Okay. One was that I don't want to be registered because I could be called for jury duty. Okay. Now that that one surprised me because number one. Uh, Jury lists are not only from the voter registration rolls, they come from your driver's license. So are you going to give up driving because you don't want to be called for jury <laughs> duty? I mean, and why would you give up your right uh, to have a voice in your government because you don't want to be called for jury duty? I just, that one just baffled me. So I want to dispel that right now that you should, don't, don't be using that as an excuse for not registering to vote. Deborah, Thank you. thanks for the call, caller. Deborah, I've, I've read some things nationally, and I don't know if this is anything that's been discussed in Wyoming or not, but I'll just kind of toss it out there, uh, that there's been some discussion that maybe we could encourage younger people to vote by getting a little more uh, technically adept and letting them vote as if they were going on social media or something. Is that anything that, that you've ever, ever heard anything about? I have heard that, and the issue so f I mean, I'm sure it's going to happen one day, but right now there's no real secure way to do that. But certainly I, I do believe that's the way we are headed. Um, back Circling back to the absentee ballot thing, uh, I've heard of, of young people who ha have never mailed a letter before. They didn't know where you get stamps. They don't know where the post office is. They've They've d done that before. Well, that's so. kind of shocking. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. Now, I, I've actually th seen things on Facebook, and I find this hard to believe, and we're getting a little far afield here, but supposedly some people can't read an analog clock. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. And, you know, because of that mail issue, that is one reason our, our drop boxes are being very well used because people then can go and just put it in there they don't have to put a stamp on it they're assured it gets in our hands on time um, so i would encourage people to to use that okay we're down to just a couple minutes left is there is there any topic regarding voting this year or the election that we haven't discussed that you'd like to address well i'll just say we have 16 days to the primary election and if you wish to vote early uh, our atrium is open Monday through Friday. The last day is August 17, which is the day before the primary election. Um, a person can come and register and vote at the same time. Um, also, uh, you know, it's not too late to request an absentee ballot. By law, you can request one up until the day of the election. So you can't request one on election day. So I would uh, encourage those who are interested in, in voting at home to call our office and get an absentee ballot. They can also come down and register, and we can sign them up for an absentee ballot right then and there. Deborah, someone on Facebook asked me to ask you to clarify the August 3rd voter registration date. Uh, yes. So August 3rd is the last day to register to vote before the primary election. So in other words, if you want to save yourself time on election day and not have to register at that point, you can come in and register on Monday. But that's the last day to do that because if you do come in after that and want to just register, you have to vote at the same time. Now the reason for that law is because county clerks have two weeks to get their poll list ready. That's why we cut cut just the registration piece off. Okay, Laramie County Hope Clerk. That makes De sense. <laughs> Deborah, we're down to a minute. Anything you want to talk about that we haven't discussed or anything else you'd like to clarify at all? 
No, if anyone has any questions, feel free to give our office a call at 633-4242, which is such an easy number to remember. Um, our website does have a lot of information on it, and I would encourage people, especially those who didn't want to be called for jury duty, to, g to come down, register, make your voice heard, make your exercise your right to vote and again we offer many ways to do that by mail at home ballot we have the early voting and election day and okay. just just real quickly again what is your website it is elections dot laramie county clerk dot com okay i'd like to thank my guest we've been speaking with laramie county clerk deborah lee deborah i appreciate you joining us on short notice it's been very informative thank you Thank you so much, and thanks for all you do.